Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. And until now we looked at primarily a lot of image analysis and data analysis when it comes to Python. And we looked at regular type of data, but part of the data that you will be working with, or I should say the type of data that you will also be working with is a time series type of data where uh, obviously, as the name suggests, time series is where your signal or information is a function of time. So whether you're in research or finance or any other fields, you may, or I should say, you will run into time series and you may be tasked with forecasting based on this time series data. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna provide a quick uh, background of time series. In the next tutorial, let's actually load a data set and explore using Python. And in the three following uh, tutorials or videos, I'm gonna use uh, or cover ARIMA, deep neural networks and recurring neural networks, of course, using Python, and uh, use these three approaches for forecasting purposes in uh, uh, you know using a time series. So let's uh, uh, first of all look at where you will you know run into this type of time series. And like I just mentioned, it doesn't matter uh, what field you are. You probably will see time series at some point because things evolve based on time as a function of time. For example, if you are looking at cells and how cells are migrating or moving, uh, I should say as a function of time. Again, this is this technically is time series. You are trying to get some properties out of this and then trying to uh, fit those properties as a function of time. Same thing here, if you are seeing uh, or imaging, this is our classic uh, you know, wound healing assay. If you are in life sciences, you know what I'm talking about. On the left and right hand side, you have uh, uh, cells and in the middle you have a scratched area and that scratched area is decreased as a function of time because the cells are migrating or growing in that specific direction. So this is again a time series and in this case you can plot the scratched area meaning as a function of time the scratched area goes down, right? So this is again another example of time series. One more example of time series is uh, you'll find that as part of, uh, again, this type of graph you can interpret that in many ways, you know, uh, I mean you can apply this or you get this type of response uh, many ways, like one, you can think of stock market, okay? How is it going up and down? And uh, hopefully it doesn't change by this much, but uh, any signal that you're collecting, you know, that can actually depend or fluctuate based on the time. And that's what I'm representing here. And nowadays, of course, we are in the middle of COVID. So even if you want to look at the number of cases as a function of time, you know, okay, in the beginning, last December, in 2019, December, there were a few cases. And then January, February, March, April, it started to spread to other countries and so on. Now, if you want to quantify things, this is again time series. Now, why is time series different? Well, time series is different from other data that we have used in the past, because in the past, we looked at a whole bunch of attributes and tried to predict, okay, is this a cat, is this a dog? Or we looked at a whole bunch of data and said, okay, uh, can we sell this or uh, can we not sell this, yeah? But when it comes to time series, uh, here, it's just a function of time. I mean, again, I don't have to go through the definition. It's on the screen. You can see that the data points are indexed against time. And the time can be year, month, millisecond. If you're looking at uh, the number of alpha particles emitted per millisecond from a radioactive material, then of course, now on your x-axis, you have milliseconds on y-axis, you know, the radiation, I guess it would be pretty random. So you would see a pretty, uh, you know, random fluctuations. Uh, uh, for, for your actual signal. But if you're looking at uh, airline passengers, which is uh, what this data set represents, then okay, as a function of time, like uh, per year or per month, how many passengers are traveling? So this is basically the time series. And I know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about here. Now, uh, again, why are we talking about this in a separate context? Because if you model this, then uh, x-axis doesn't mean anything. It's just the time is increasing, right? The data is not correlated typically, you know, with anything but itself. Meaning if you look back one month ago and a month ago and a month ago, you'll see a pattern. But if you kind of correlate that with something else, you won't see a pattern. That's why our time series is different from other type of data that we have analyzed in the past, including image analysis. 
Okay, so uh, one thing I would like to mention, I don't wanna get into too many details about time series analysis. I hope you already have background, or if not, maybe whatever little thing I cover is a good start for you. So most traditional models require time to be stationary. If you have used traditional mo models like autoregression, you know, uh, ARIMA or uh, uh, some of these traditional techniques, even Fourier transform based techniques, it requires the data to be stationary. Otherwise, how can you forecast if the mean and variance are changing? By the way, I should have defined what stationary is. Stationary basically means that uh, the data, you know, the mean and the variance, uh, uh, it, it's, it's constant over time. Otherwise, you cannot predict it, okay? Uh, with traditional uh, models, but the newer approaches, whether it is LSTMs or uh, approaches like SARIMA, S-A-R-I-M-A, -A, for example, they are designed to work with uh, some of these uh, uh, data sets that are non-stationary. Now, what do I mean by stationary? You can see uh, a quick graphical representation on the screen. On the left-hand side, you have a stationary series where you can see, yes, of course, it is fluctuating, but you can see that it's, very, uh, it's doing that in a predictable way. Non-stationary, this is just one example, but non-stationary also means things are changing in a different way as, as time goes on and so on. You can correct for these and then use the traditional methods, but you don't have to correct for these if you pick the right approach. That's the reason I wanted to cover ARIMA or SARIMA and uh, the deep neural networks and LSTM for this, uh, for this uh, demonstration purposes. Now, uh, like I said, thanks to these some of these Python libraries, I mean, this used to be uh, something that you need to code or do it in Excel, you know, um, a, a lot with, with a lot of effort. But now with a single line uh, in stats models, for example, is a Python library that I absolutely love for this type of work. Also PMD Arima is another one that actually works very well. So with a single line of code, you can actually take your actual observations and obtain a trend. Trend is as the name suggests, it's a trend. How does the data trend as a uh, long period of time? So as you can see, the trend is more people are flying as you go from 1949 to 1959, the number of people that are flying, uh, they're going up. But then on top of that, you have seasonality, which means, okay, in summer, more people travel, in winter, less people travel, or I just made that up, but that could be the trend here, okay? During holidays, people travel, or during summer vacation time, people travel. So. Uh, now, uh, you, there, there are many traditional and modern approaches, like I already mentioned, but I'm going to focus only on the three uh, primary uh, approaches. One is autoregressive. It's called ARIMA. AR stands for autoregressive and MA stands for moving average. These two are two techniques. Now we are going to put them together and uh, put integrated in the middle. And uh, uh, it's it's... Again, it's very widely used. That's why I'm not talking about anything else other than this. And uh, uh, the other one I'm going to talk about is fully connected neural networks. This also works fine on most types of data sets uh, because we have used neural networks in our past videos. I thought of actually just go ahead and use it and see how time series uh, data can be uh, you know, uh, uh, fitted to a model and then uh, that model can be used for forecasting. Exactly same approach for LSTM. LSTM is again another neural network based approach, but as it's, it's, it's in fact a part of uh, uh, something called recurrent neural networks. Again, I'll uh, take some time, uh, at least create a video talking about LSTM. Okay, and uh, ARIMA itself, uh, maybe if you're coming from scientific background, you're probably not used to uh, what what this is again? If you have taken any courses in business or even in statistics, you may have uh, you know uh, looked at this. Arima, uh, like I mentioned, it's uh, it's it's AR plus MA integrated with an I term right there. There are three parameters, P, D, and Q. Again, I don't want you to get confused here, but I want to introduce this P, D, and Q because later on when we talk about it, when, when I'm doing, okay, my P equals to one and D equals to one and Q equals to two or something, you at least have an idea of what I'm trying to do there. Okay, so uh, AR stands for autoregression, like I mentioned, and uh, we have a term called lowercase p. You will also see uppercase p depending upon the seasonality, but let's not get into that yet. Uh, the p component is the one that kind of controls the autoregression or defines the autoregression part, and i is the integration, which is basically it uses the differencing of observations, okay? And uh, this is uh, represented by a parameter d, and uh, you'll see moving average is represented by a parameter q. 
Now, um, there are, again, I just use the term Arima, but this is a general approach, but there are a few flavors of Arima. Like you, this is basically non-seasonal autoregressive integrated moving averages, if I just say Arima, which means if you have any stationarity, seasonality, you know, you kind of take care of it during your pre-processing of data. Now there is something called Sarima, S-A-R-I-M-A. -A. So this is designed to deal with seasonal uh, aspects. So most of the time I use this. And uh, it's built on top of Arima, obviously. And uh, sorry, Max is another one. And uh, I'll also use uh, the Auto Arima in one of the libraries because it actually tells us what P, Q, and D values are appropriate and what model is appropriate based on the data. So I'll introduce all of this, but then when it comes to Python, it's literally very straightforward. So please, please watch that video. Okay, now we just covered Arima. Let me just quickly talk about feed forward fully connected neural networks. Again, we know what these are. These are, uh, you know, these neural networks that are actually connected. So from every neuron to every other neuron. And finally, we have like two outputs. For example, if the input is all the features describing a cat and the output can be a cat and a dog and cat with a probability of, let's say 0.8 and dog with a probability of 0.2, at which point we say, okay, it is highly probable that the input image is a cat. Of course, now we try to use this classification or convert that classification engine into a forecasting engine for time series. LSTMs, again, uh, if, if you see a graphic like this, it refers to a uh, LSTM. And LSTM has, you see this thing at time t minus one and that thing at t plus one. What that represents is, yes, I'm doing something here, but I'm taking information from the previous uh, you know, step and I'm also handing information to the next step. This basically means LSTM is designed to work with sequence type of data, which is time series, of course, but also natural language processing. When I say the term processing, I know that, okay, after P, I have R, after R, I have O, and then C, and then it should naturally know what should follow. And that's at a uh, letter level, text level. Now you can also do that at a word level. So anytime you deal with sequences, LSTMs are amazing. So we'll spend a couple of uh, tutorials uh, talking about LSTM. Okay, so I hope you found uh, at least this, this uh, groundwork you know, to be useful in the next tutorial, let's uh, continue the discussion and let's open up Python and uh, import a data set and see how we can actually uh, explore, you know, this data using a few plotting functions and also a few other functions from some of the statistical uh, based libraries in Python. Thank you very much and please do watch the next video. Thanks.